This is a microwave oven transformer repurposed to use to for the filament voltage and valves. In this case I've got a couple of 4-400s. Here you can see they're happily lit on the workbench here. These are tied in parallel. These need 5 volts each at 14 and a half amps, like 29 amps altogether. So here I'm using a tin wire gauge. Here this is stranded. And it's pretty easy to wrap up here. And it's about a volt a turn, so we count the turns. I got, uh, let's see, it comes in here and goes one, two, three, four, five. And there it comes over there. And it happily provides the current for the tube. In fact, over here, the meter that's five, about five and a half volts. That's probably a little too much. So the idea is to take off one turn here or half a turn and that'll do it and we'll see that here in just a second. So here I've removed a turn or a half a turn actually. There's the voltage now 4.9 volts is probably a better voltage for these tubes, filament voltage. So either way you know kind of six one way half a dozen the other you can either put the turn on there and get five and about five and a half volts for the tubes and put a resistor a small uh, wire resistor in line uh, to bring the voltage down to perfect 5 volts, or you can either uh, just leave it at 4.92. One of the other things in preparing these involves cutting off the windings from the old uh, high voltage windings from the uh, transformer. Uh, I had to take a hacksaw and cut it that way, and then do the same thing on the other sides. And then what I do is I take a hammer and a, a chisel, and I would drive out the existing windings through each one and the uh, shunts and then it works these are actually very good transformers to use for filament transformers uh, a couple of caveats one is that you really need a fan on these things if they're to be extended for a period of time because they do get quite hot just the way they're made in this case i've just got a gentle breeze going across this one it doesn't take much of a fan to keep these a reasonable temperature and one of the other caveats with these is they draw an inordinate amount of current. So what I did is put a power factor correction capacitor. This is a bit big for this, this little one, but uh, it, uh, you don't really need it, but I like to put them in here because it does reduce the amount of current these uh, will draw from the AC line. Here's a diagram I drew up to kind of illustrate how to prepare the transformer. Uh, again, here's the uh, MOT, and you get the primary uh, and the AC mains. We have a capacitor here. This is power factor correction capacitor. Okay, so we have, uh, we'll use a motor run capacitor for this purpose, and if you're using it, uh, if your mains is uh, in the 230 volt range, you use a 20 microfarad of about 300 volt rating or higher, or if you're in the 120 volt range, you use an 80 microfarad. At 200 volts AC or higher and again this has to be a an AC type motor run capacitor to be used for continuous service and over here on the secondary this would be like uh, you get a, about one volt per turn so in the case of the 4-400s that'd be like five turns give one turn or take a turn but or a half a turn but that's about what it is if you have a higher voltage like seven or eight volts again it's the rule of thumb one turn per volt on this. These will make excellent filament transformers for a linear or whatever you're going to use or high current transformers for whatever other purpose you can really easily get. You can get a lot of uh, current out of these. It is. And of course having the fan again uh, to keep the thing cool, the transformer, and in this case the tubes too, the contacts. And there's the voltage. That's, uh, that's it. But that's how uh, you can repurpose these uh, microwave oven transformers to be used for uh, a filament transformer and, and uh, for making linear amplifiers or replacing one in your linear amp. And they make great substitutes.